Hey there, Chris Kellett here with 123 Muse, and we're going to show you today this great new widget called Cover Video. Now, this is Cover Video in action. We can see we've got this background video, which we may have seen before on other widgets and so on. But this uh, new widget allows you to have background video, to have content that stays in the center of the video, to have content that hugs the bottom of the browser as you scale and then when you scroll the page the footer content fades out you can have this center content fading out as well and then you can have your page so you may have seen this kind of um, home page landing page header area on other sites and wondered how you can do it well now you can with this new 123 muse widget now let's also take a look at um, what it looks like on a device so i'm just going to bring up my my iPad here. Let's just close that down. And if we take a look here on this device, we can see that it still works. Now, what the difference on the um, on a device like an iPad or an iPhone, the video doesn't play. So devices don't allow video to play automatically. So instead, it uses the poster image. However, the content still stays in the center and you still have the footer. And if we change the orientation here, you can see that everything moves and scales with the device. So let's get into how we can actually use this in a Muse project. First of all, let's take a look at the assets we will need. Now we have four assets here. Now we don't need this one, this image fill. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But we do need an MP4 video a WebM video and a poster image. Now, you can create these in any encoding software you like. However, I would say that Miro, the free Miro encoder, is very useful for creating these videos quickly. Now, you also want to create really a loop um, for your video, so the background video. So if you it's looping, you want it to connect ni nicely rather than jumping. Um, we show you how to do how to encode videos with Miro and other services in previous articles in 123Muse and we'll have the link in the content below to those articles. The poster image really needs to be the first frame of the video and then what that means is that in the devices you see an image that matches the video and whilst the video is loading the uh, widget will show the poster image and then the video will start playing and it will all make design sense. The image fill here, um, this is an overlay that you can put on the video and we're going to show you how you can use this image fill to create an overlay effect to make your content stand out when it's sitting on top of the video. But let's jump into Muse and get started. So uh, let's just open up Muse here. So I've got this demo template here that we're working with and we want to add the video. First of all, let's just add the basic cover video. We have two widgets in here. One is just the basic cover video and one is the cover video with content. So let's drag that onto the page. Its default size is 960 pixels by 600 pixels just to make it nice and easy to get the um, started. Once it's on the page, we want to hit the 100% width button and now we can start loading up our content. But let's take a look at our options first. As you can see, there's quite a few options here. We have our loop video and mute audio. If you don't loop the video, um, then it'll just play once. So we want to keep that on loop. Mute the audio, yes, we want, if there's any audio control um, contained in the video, we want to mute it. However, I would encourage you to encode your videos without audio, uh, unless that's required for the project because it means that the file size will be a lot smaller, so it'll be a lot faster to load up as well. And audio, unless you've got control to, to mute the audio on the actual uh, player itself, which we don't put on this, um, then it could be irritating to the end user. Then we have our poster image. So that was our first frame of the video. That's We'd load that here our mp4 files and webm files and then our content control so when we take a look at the um, cover video with content you will see these two parts and how we use them i'm going to switch those um those no i'm going to leave those on for the time 
being. Then we have a video credit. I'm going to switch that on, and I'm going to uh, sorry, I'm going to leave that on, and the arrow. We'll see that in a minute, and then the video overlay and use a background image. Let's go ahead and take a look at what each one of these do. So the first thing we want to do is load up our poster image. So we're going to go into our video asset files here and we can see our poster. Now notice it won't allow you to load anything else but a poster image, either a PNG or a JPEG. So let's open that up. And the widget automatically scales that background image uh, into place, so that's great. Let's load up our video files now. So we want our MP4, and again, the widget will only allow you to load an MP4 file and a WebM file. The difference with the two files, why you need the two files if you're not quite familiar with it, some devices, um, some browsers prefer the MP4 format for video, and some browsers prefer a WebM format. So by loading them both, the code will allow uh, each video to be played on each browser type. Now let's preview this as is. So let's just preview this in the browser. And we can see that our video has loaded up. We can scroll, we can resize the image here, the uh, browser, sorry, and everything scales nicely. Now, down the bottom here, we have a video credit and we have an arrow. That arrow fades as you scroll down and the video credit stays there and it also is a hyperlink. The video credit is there for if you're using video footage from somebody else that you need to accredit. So that's already built in and that stays nice and discreet in the corner, but also make sure that the credit is uh, viewable and clickable to go and see the creative artist who's provided that video. So we thought that was kind of a neat feature to include. Let's just switch that off for the time being. So I'm going to hide the video credit, but you can see here that you could um, you can put the video credit name, who the who the what the video uh, uh, title is, the name of the person that created the video, and a link to wherever the accreditation needs to go. So let's hide that for the time being, and we can also change the color of the arrow. So let's change that to an orange. And we can also change the color and the opacity of the overlay. So if we switch that to maybe, let's change it to the orange for the time being. We're not going to keep it like that, but let's just switch that out. And then if we preview that in the browser, again, you can preview directly in news, but we're going to preview in the browser. We can see now we have this orange overlay and we have an orange arrow. So there's some quite nice controls there for the video. I'm going to switch the video, the arrow back to white and I'm going to change the video overlay to black and let's change it down to let's say 0.3. The other thing that we have is a background image so if we click on use background image and then we're going to load up this image fill you could use anything you like the best thing to have is a semi-transparent PNG and it will tile that image um, and now let's have a look at what that does. So we can see now we have this nice grid pattern sitting over the top of the video. Uh, this is a really good idea if you have a video that's slightly pixelated, the grid pattern can bring out the sharpness of it. So that's uh, quite a useful little feature that we've put in there and you can put whatever you like. So you can change that overlay, switch it off completely and so on. Let's turn that image overlay off. Take a look at some of the um, other controls that we have here. Um, we're going to, yeah, we've hidden that. Let's hide. We can hide the arrow as well. So if we preview, let's just preview that directly in news. So we've hidden the arrow, and you may want to do that if you've got the content sitting in the footer, which is the next part we'll look at is how to place content on here. So we've got the hang of how to add this cover video in there. Let's take this off and let's load up the cover video plus content. So if we drag this in place, we want to pop this in the center again. And let's make sure that we've made all of our content full width. So I've selected the video background, select this bar here, and I'm going to select this here. Now let's just go through step part section by section of what we've got here. Number one, in the background, we have got the background, the cover video widget. That's sitting in the background. On top of that, we have got a normal rectangle set to 100% width. 
and we have a graphic style called content. We've applied a graphic style called content. It's fully transparent. There's no um, edges to it. There's no borders to it. It's just a transparent rectangle full width. Inside that rectangle, so just as you can see, there's a little bit of space top and bottom to ensure that this text box is inside of that rectangle. And then down the bottom here, we have, this is actually a button that we're using as a container, and we've got a graphic style called sticky applied to it. I'm going to just redefine that style. So we've got a graphic style called sticky. We've then got a text block with a button in, uh, next to it. So sitting inside of that button. Now we've ha got this video at 600 pixels. The widget itself will force the video, this rectangle, to scale to the height and width of the browser. So the widget does that. What the widget also looks for is it looks for a piece of uh, content called content currently. And it also looks for a piece of content called sticky that's sitting within the area of the cover video. So although the you don't need to change the size, make this bigger or smaller um, for it to work, but you do need to ensure that all of your content is sitting inside of this area. So we can see that this bottom part, this sticky footer, is sitting at the bottom of the cover video. This content here is sitting at the top. And notice this rectangle is just about the same size as this block. And those, all of those points are important because of the way the widget works. Now let's see where the widget picks up on that content. If we go down to this content control, you'll see that we have center content ID. What is the con what is the style or graphic style that the widget is looking for to ensure that that content is center? Well, it's looking for content. And if you remember, we called this rectangle content. Which content should it class as the sticky footer content? Well, it's looking for the content sitting inside the graphic style of sticky. So if you wanted to change these two, you would also need to change the name of the corresponding styles here. So let's go ahead and add our video files again. So our poster, our MP4, and our WebM file. So now we have a graphical representation of the um, entire widget. Let's go ahead and preview this now. We're going to preview it directly in Muse. And we can see that we have our introduction text here. And we have our um, button sitting at the bottom. And then as we scale, we can see the content centering. Hang on a minute. Why is this background image black? Why isn't the video playing? Well, let's go back to our widget. And if we look at our video overlay, can you see that the opacity is set to one? That means that it's 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 going to just fill it with color. So let's set that back to 0.4. And if we preview that again, we can see the video is playing. And we can see that our content, sure enough, is sticking to the bottom of the page. Great. And this is centered. So you can see how the various elements that we created within that framework are now being interpreted by the widget and creating this layout that we want. Now, we want to make sure that we switch the arrow off and the video credit, and that's exactly why those controls are in there, because when you want to do this, you want to switch those items off. So let's go ahead and hide the scroll arrow, and we're going to hide the video credit. Now, once this content is in there, the great thing with this is this is just pure Muse content, so you can do whatever you like with it. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to make this area a bit taller. And we wanted to change the color, so let's uh, change that to the orange. And we'll change our button to, let's say, uh, let's put a background fill of the white there, and we'll put a border of white there. And let's change our text in this button to this orange color 
or maybe we'll make it the, the blue, there we go. And this text here, we want to, let's extend this down a little minute. And you can see as well, this is a, a good point. I've got the, um, the show frame edges switched on. So if I switch that off, you can see, and it just makes it a lot easier to work with in this particular case. So show frame edges, we can see where everything is. So I'm going to change this text out and we're just using the, the Muse tools. Let's change that out to bold. Uh, let's maybe get a button in here as well. Let's put a button in this area. And maybe we'll change that to a ghost button. So we'll take that out. And let's change the text color here. And then we're just going to move this into place. Now, notice that we're not centering, we're not attempting to center the content in the design mode, we're ensuring that the content is sitting at the top of the page here. Cut that button out and I'm gonna go into the text here and I'm just gonna paste that in there. And move this back up, here we go. And go to preview. And we can see now that we have our um, button here We've changed the, the content. It's just waiting for the video to load up in the background. There we go. And um, we've been able to make these changes directly within Muse. So we haven't, we're not limited to what we can put in here. We could put a sign up form in here. We could put extra buttons. We could put all sorts of items within this area and it will remain centered, um, which is uh, a really useful. Um, something that we've certainly wanted. Um, we're using this widget in uh, in our, uh, the new landing page of our own One Two Three Muse site because we wanted this widget ourselves. So we're pretty sure that you'll you want it too. So what else can we do? Well, let's just take a look at one of the other settings. Let's click on the video widget again, and let's take a look at what this control here does, which is the fade control. Now, when we, um, let's just preview this just to make sure that this makes sense. When you scroll down the page, you'll see that the this image, this content here fades. We might not want it to fade. We may want it to stay um, fully, um, fully opaque. So let's hide center control content and we may want the sticky content to stay um, fully opaque as well, but we'll leave that on for this for, for the time being. Uh, actually, no, just for the sake of this tutorial, let's take a look at that. And now if we preview, we'll see that as we scroll down the page now, our content um, remains fully opaque and we can scroll down and this button sits at the bottom and hugs the, the browser. So you have some good controls there that allow you to do all sorts of creative things with this widget. Um, uh, background video is, is great, but previous background widgets just put a background video. What we do need is in the case of a landing page where you have a background video is to still be able to scroll down and see the additional content. And that's why we created this widget. So we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. We look forward to seeing what you create with it. Please ensure that your videos are encoded as compressed as you can to make your sites nice and fast. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us in support or in Facebook or on Twitter. And we hope to be able to answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching.